Welcome to the Course Profs Podcast. Whatever you teach online, we'll help you make better courses and deliver more impact. Coming up, Course Creator News, all the latest updates and insider information from the world of online learning. Our featured guest, bringing you an expert's eye on building a successful course business. Micro learning has, has many, many benefits. I think the number one benefit is that it's just more digestible. Um, you can really retain information faster uh, when it's broken down into steps rather than like learning 10 steps at a time and then having to go back to step three, it's very difficult. Um, but it also makes the content much more approachable. And today's top tool to make your courses shine. Welcome to the Course Profs Podcast. I'm Simon Denant, founder of CourseProfs.com. Glad to have you with us today. We've got another feature-packed episode for all the course creators out there. Later in the show, we'll be bringing you the first interview from the founder of a new mobile learning app that's recently emerged out of beta and is hitting the mobile app stores. But first, let's get a quick roundup of the latest online learning news from around the web. We're heavy on the hardware in today's news, starting with a useful little gadget from Focusrite. Now, if you've never heard of Focusrite, I'd not be surprised, as for many years, their market has been focused on producing hardware for musicians. However, like many music hardware companies, they've shifted into the creator space, as there's a ton of similarity between making music and creating content online. Focusrite recently released Vocaster, a recording interface aimed at podcasters and content creators that promises to help you create high quality audio. The Vocaster One has one XLR mic input and the Vocaster One Studio has a professional XLR microphone included in the package. The Vocaster Two offers two mic inputs if you want to do in-person interviews with another guest. You connect the Vocaster to your computer via a USB connection and it acts like an external sound card input in any of your video or audio editing software. So why are the Vocaster products useful to course creators? Firstly, audio quality is absolutely essential with video. No one will watch your video if they can't hear you properly. And many content creators miss focusing on getting really good audio but it makes a massive difference on how people interact with your video. Having used Focusrite products when I was in the music industry, I can vouch for the fact that their products are really high quality and well designed. So if you're looking to get an external audio interface to make your content sound more professional, definitely take a look at the Vocaster range of audio interfaces. When you're using your favorite editing software, do you get frustrated with having to remember all the shortcut keys to your favorite functions? Do your hands get tired twisting your fingers to hit Control shift v Command alt 7 Seriously though, RSI can be a real issue when you are producing a lot of content. The Elgato Stream Deck, a programmable button-based content creation controller that lets you assign shortcuts and macros to a single button, has been around for a while now. I've been using it for quite some time, and it's transformed the way I post-produce content, especially in tools like Camtasia and Audacity. However, there's a new controller on the block to challenge Elgato Stream Deck, and it's called the Loop Deck. It looks and operates in a similar way to the Stream Deck. It has the familiar trigger buttons at its core, though it adds rotary controls and a few additional secondary button controls too. Loop Deck is a product that's crowdfunding on Indiegogo at the moment. However, Loop Deck are not a startup. They're a fully fledged company with other hardware products for content creators too. And they've been around for a while. So it's a bit odd that they decided to launch the Loop Deck live on Indiegogo. They do offer a discount if you order it on Indiegogo though. So I think they've probably used it as a marketing platform to bring the product to market. Now, being a Stream Deck user already, I was curious whether the Loop Deck's additional rotary buttons would be useful mapped to various volume functions within your software. The Loop Deck Live does come in at over double the price of Elgato's equivalent Stream Deck offering though. So if you're in the market for a controller like this, and if you value the health of your hands and fingers long-term, and you should do, 
Be sure to check out the features of each of those products I mentioned to make sure they'll be helpful for your editing and post-production setup. I personally prefer Elgato Stream Deck, but I do think the Loop Deck is worth a look if you haven't already got one of these types of controllers. Let's leave hardware behind and get back to the software. TechSmith have released Camtasia 2022, and I've recently downloaded and installed it. There's a ton of minor improvements, not too many major release items this time around, but the ones that made it in production are definitely worth a look. Firstly, Camtasia have added input supports for virtual cameras and camera capture cards. Now this should help bring in new users to Camtasia, which has always been seen in some circles as primarily a tool to capture on-screen video. I've always used it for pieces to camera too, and it's always been very capable, but hopefully this will raise it further up the echelances of professional video editing tools. Cursors get a makeover in Camtasia 22 with vector replacements for mouse pointers, making screencast follow along software demos look sharper. And you now also have the ability to edit cursor paths that have been recorded or add your own cursor paths to any image, video or group within the cursor path creator effect. Other inclusions in this release are a tighter integration with TechSmith's own Audiate audio software, a new home section experience, and what I think is the most valuable, a whole bunch of new library assets. These assets are worth the yearly maintenance package cost alone, and I'm really glad to see that TechSmith have released these library additions, including over a thousand new callouts, animations, effects, and title assets. There's icons, overlays, and much, much more. They are nicely designed and really easy to customise. Colours can be simply and quickly changed to your own brand's palette. And I'd love to see more of these released every year, TechSmith. As I always say, Camtasia really is our video and screencast editor of choice. And you can get yourself a free 14-day trial and road test it yourself at go.courseprofs.com slash TechSmith. On today's show, we're exploring the future of online learning. Now, many of you watching this may well have created a course in the traditional linear fashion. You plan out a structure for your course, you create the content in bulk, get yourself signed up to a course platform, upload the content and launch your course to the world. Well, that's the way online learning has been for a long time, but now a new app to the online learning scene is ripping up the rule book and offering a new way for online educators to engage with their learners. The app that I'm talking about is called MinuteSkill, a social learning platform that promises on-demand learning in bite-sized videos to help you become a better professional or creative. To tell us more about the app, I'm really excited to talk to entrepreneur and CEO of MinuteSkill, Nathan Knight. Nathan, welcome to the show. Hi, Simon. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, you're most welcome. It's uh, very exciting. I'm really keen to find out more uh, about uh, the Minute Scale app. But before we do, uh, I want to jump in at the start. Um, what inspired you to actually build a startup uh, around online learning, um, especially mobile? Uh, and tell our audience uh, a bit about the journey you took to come up with the actual idea to, to build Minute Scale as, as a mobile app. Yeah, so minutes ago, the idea itself started from my co-founder, Camila. Um, and it was really because we saw that online learning was, you know, it was really more so geared towards being a simulated or virtual classroom. And that we noticed that younger people in particular started dropping off, you know, the engagement uh, with these platforms and these, these, this type of uh, delivery of the content was really low. And so around 95% of people actually don't finish courses on these online platforms and they end up going to social media instead. Um, and so we started to dive deeper into this. And when we asked people about this, you know, we got a lot of feedback saying like they hate learning on social media. It's chaotic. It's distracting. It's not safe. They wish there's a more structured, uh, but still social uh, learning platform. And that's kind of what birthed MinuteScale really. So MinuteScale uh, is this new way to learn online. It's community driven. It's mobile. It's short. Uh, it's a platform where people can learn continuously and, and how they really want to learn. As you say, many more people are, are, are moving to social to answer their questions. I mean, obviously, Google owns YouTube. So, you know, when people Google a question, uh, they come up with um, 
uh, stuff that's on YouTube as well, because obviously it's a, a linked property of, of Google's. Um, but as you say, um, how do you have uh, the trust in what you're learning? And also, you're right, it's chaotic. Um, there's tons of ads now, um, uh, and people are trying to drive you to websites, etc. But the the key thing is, it's also unguided, right? So you might find out perhaps the one uh, one item you were looking for, and to find more, it's pretty difficult, you know, to to kind of have that in a structured format necessarily. Um, so you mentioned social learning. Um, I love this idea of, of social learning. I mean, since that's the core focus of Minute Skill, how would you kind of define what social learning means to somebody? Um, and what are some of the concepts that are different with social learning as opposed to, as you mentioned, what we might think as traditional online learning formats involving like more formal guided learning management systems? Um, so at MinuteScale, we define social learning, I'd say more as community oriented learning. So uh, we know that people learn better when they learn together. Uh, that's how it is in real life. Uh, and yet this hasn't really been effectively done digitally yet. So uh, traditional learning, of course, it's just you, your laptop, um, and the speaker uh, on the laptop. Uh, but Minuscule really focuses on the, the social interaction between peers rather than that top-down lecture style format that uh, we're discussing. Um, so for example, think about like really easily sharing, connecting, and learning at the same time collaboratively with your team or maybe in minutes ago, you're joining a community on a certain topic that you're trying to learn with like-minded individuals and you can discuss the goals and improve yourself together, uh, watch content together and, and you know, uh, get things done together. That's kind of the thesis behind the mid-school social learning aspect. So basically um, we're talking cohorts and, um, and effectively we're talking taking some inspiration from kind of watch parties on things like Facebook, I suppose, as well, um, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Um, now, you also talk about uh, micro learning. I mean, this has been a buzzword for a while and certainly uh, traditional kind of learning management systems have tried to uh, push micro learning as, um, uh, 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 as a content format. Um, certainly, um, uh, attention spans are getting shorter, uh, probably because of the rise of things like YouTube and social media. Um, and that's, that's obviously moving over into e-learning micro learning is, is is what I see as a big part of minute skill short sessions of, of learning as opposed to the longer form content. Um, what do you think some of the benefits of micro learning are for the learner? Yeah, so we are, of course, uh, huge fans of micro learning uh, coming up in the generation that we did and, and just the world around us and, and micro learning has has many, many benefits. I think the number one benefit is that it's just more digestible. Um, you can really retain information faster uh, when it's broken down into steps rather than like learning 10 steps at a time and then having to go back to step three, it's very difficult. Um, but it also makes the content much more approachable um, and easily searchable, which we're finding out now. So for example, you can find what you need, like exactly what you need, much easier and faster than having to sift through a really long video. At the same time, your emotions about this, like you don't feel as overwhelmed when you see like an eight hour lecture on a topic that you want to apply right now. You don't feel that, you know, defeated feeling of just like, oh my gosh, I have to get through eight hours before I can do something. It's like, I have, you know, eight minutes and I can learn how to do it and then apply it right away. Um, it also just, you know, building on that, it just makes it more actionable. So of course, you know, you can uh, share a three minute video and, actually apply that three minute video in real time rather than having to learn an entire topic at once. And then like hopefully down the road months later, you could apply it. Um, so of course, uh, minute scale, we leverage that uh, micro learning. We call it bite size learning. Uh, we string them together in a series so you can still dive deeper into topics, but it's just stepwise. Then, you know, I can go back, as I said, to step three and so forth and, and things like that. So it's just more consumable and actionable uh, version of long form lectures. And, and, and that makes total sense um, because obviously people learn by doing uh, rather than learning by watching. Um, and uh, as you say, it makes it much more accessible. Um, and I love that uh, that term, bite-sized. <laughs> um, so, so let's dive into the uh, Minute Skill app itself. Um, are there any kind of particular topics or niches that you're focusing on? Uh, what kind of content uh, can learners expect from the Minute Skill app? So right now we're focused on founders, business owners, um, professional type content. 
Um, so things like, you know, cash flow management, financials, how to pitch to VCs, for example, how to build an MVP, all sorts of uh, professional uh, business type content like that. Um, we have gotten interest from all sorts of different stakeholders. And so we will definitely be expanding our content down the road. Um, but for now, right when you enter the app, those are, that's the type of content you'll see. So uh, entrepreneurs, founders, and um, in the current uh, economy, that more and more people are looking uh, to be more entrepreneurial, to increase their income. Um, and one of uh, my favorite saying is, to, uh, you know, teach what you know and change your life. And people are, are making um, uh, are making a, an effort to, to kind of teach people, as you say, in the community. Uh, and more and more people are, are realizing that they've got a lot of knowledge to share and uh, apps like MinuteSkill uh, are a great way for people to dive in um, and share their experience. Everyone can become a teacher now. Um, mm -hmm. So what opportunities do you think there are for, for, for course creators in MinuteSkill? Um, how would you advise course creators to approach uh, teaching in the app if they wanted to get started kind of uh, as a tutor? I think the first most important thing about Miniscale is that the creators actually retain their IP. And we did that purposely because we saw how uh, social media apps usually treat creators on other platforms. Oftentimes mm. creators feel exploited. They, you know, those platforms take the IP, they uh, take all the value really, and they give very little back in terms of monetization for the creator. So Miniscale creators retain the IP. Um, we promote creators to use Miniscale as, as for lead generation as well. Um, to their other uh, assets, uh, and they can also monetize their content. And we're looking to build in a, a pay-per-view type model just to give the most value back to creators. Um, I think the most, you know, the next most important thing about Minute Skill is that uh, when we keep bringing in more organizations, and we're looking to connect those organizations to actually commission work from these creators to get that custom or specific content for their organization's learners. So we're really trying to build out an ecosystem where the creators get value for the work. Um, and then they could get connected to this entire ecosystem where they can continue to provide more and more uh, to organizations like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I would suggest. Yeah, and you've touched on kind of the next question that followed on from that uh, was the, uh, that, um, as you say, course creators uh, can find their, uh, find their self on, on, on some course platforms, um, as say, relinquishing IP or, or kind of not getting the greatest value. Um, you mentioned the, the monetization strategies. Obviously, you're in the very early stages at the moment. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, you just out of beta or perhaps even in beta. But the um, further down the line, um, what kind of monetization strategy? Because this is a question a lot of course creators will, 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 will um, kind of have, is that what, what kind of monetization, monetization strategies do you have in mind as you grow? Um, and do you think course creators will be able to kind of effectively build a business on the minute skill platform of their own yeah that's the goal so for creators they can monetize their videos uh, entire series their entire profile i think to build a business what we're building in is to be able to monetize an entire cohort so similar to how you would set up an lms with in a, a cohort and you get your learners and you're you're paying for that platform to deliver content on minute skill we'd allow you to monetize that cohort so people would pay to get access into your content and you still get to deliver it in this social and immersive and engaging environment. Um, so we definitely think that down the road, there'll be an opportunity for creators to have their entire uh, business on minute skill. Um, and what about peer to peer learning? Now, this is something we touched on a little bit earlier, but um, do you think an app like minute skill can encourage students to kind of discover that they can become a teacher and share knowledge between other users effectively, you know, becoming a teacher to others. Oh, absolutely. That's exactly what MinuteSkill is intended to do. So uh, we have a community feature coming out. So if you go to our community tab, people can really easily, um, you know, ask questions and people can really easily reply to those questions and answer them. You know, you could discuss topics, uh, share resources, um, put your own tutorials on or, or just simple, how did I get through this? So for example, a founder who just raised, they can put their whole journey in this community and say, hey guys, you want to hear my story about how I just raised or pre-seed? Uh, and they can do this through video, through text, uh, voice, uh, all of that. Amazing. Um, I know we, we talked about social networks earlier and social networks can have a very, influ a very influential effect on its users. Now, clearly Mi Minute Skills mission is wholly a positive one, making learning and growth uh, much more addictive. And that can only be a good thing. Um, 
but how are you going to approach moderating the Minute School platform to make sure that it does remain a safe space for users to learn and interact in? Yeah, so um, right now we are uh, meeting with every single creator that we have and, and really curating that content. Um, as we scale, of course, uh, this is where we are investing heavily into algorithms to ensure that the community guidelines are met. Um, uh, this is because, you know, one thing social media really lacks that is necessary to learn is the psychological safety. So knowing the content and the creators are reliable is very important when a user goes to the content to actually learn. Um, so we recognize that we not only need to make Metascale this safe, but we also need to show like how reliable the, cre the creators are, their credentials, you know, make it really clear that someone has experience in this area before you're even looking at their videos. Um, kind of similar to how LinkedIn sh shows you someone's work experience, so you know they're a real person uh, versus other apps that have an anonymous users. You know, that totally makes sense. Um, so tell us about some of the, the teachers and the courses and content that are on the Minix Skill platform so far. Uh, and what would you like to see more of if there are course creators out there that might want to get involved? Right now, I'm really happy to announce that we have partnered with the amazing content creator Slidebean, uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, they deliver really awesome foundational content for early stage entrepreneurs. Um, we actually use their content to learn like what, what a pitch deck was when we first started our entrepreneurial journey. Uh, so it's really funny and full circle how they ended up back on our platform. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see more of these entrepreneurial creators, anyone who's looking to pay it forward, you know, back to young entrepreneurs. Uh, I think the entrepreneurship industry is a, a knowledge industry. And so it's really necessary to share what you know back to uh, other founders and, and help them get through it. Um, so I'd love to see more of that. And, and really just anyone with this experience who loves to create content and share their expertise, that is all that we're looking for. Yeah, that sounds like a brilliant growth community that you're, you're forging here. Um, now, I'm going to ask you uh, a little bit more about yourself here in this last question. I ask it to all the guests that appear on the podcast. Um, we know that all our guests have worked really long and hard to, to get where they are today. Um, and that's a journey. And on that journey, uh, they've had highs and lows. Uh, I'm sure Minute Skill uh, has taken a long time, certainly longer than people expect to, to, to come to fruition. Uh, Absolutely. And yeah, and, and, I, and I, I can probably guarantee that it's brought you, you know, tons of valuable learning experiences. Is there kind of one mantra or is there, you know, just some words of wisdom that you could share with our audience today that, that you kind of live by because of the journey you've had so far as, a, as an entrepreneur building this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's a really great question. So <laughs> I'd probably say, um, you know, it's not the most experienced person or the best person in the room that succeeds. It's the person that doesn't give up. It's the person that wants to learn rather than throw in the towel that succeeds. Um, and I can definitely say coming from, you know, uh, my background and, and being a very young entrepreneur, uh, I'm never the most experienced person in the room. I'm never the best person or the smartest person in the room. Uh, but one thing that I have is, uh, you know, I won't give up and I'm very resilient and determined to make this a success. Um, and that has really uh, propelled me. And I think that uh, having that growth mindset is an incredibly uh, valuable skill to have. A great quote there about not being the smartest person in the room. I think whatever age you are, whatever background you come from, uh, I think that is a great mantra um, because it puts you in listening mode, puts you in learning mode. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, you know, that, that's the best place to be. So well, that's great. Um, be, don't be the smartest person in the room. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, look, thanks for coming on the show today. Uh, it's, it's, it's been brilliant to hear about the, the growth of Minute Skill and what it does. If our audiences want to get started on it, um, and, uh, and find out more about Minute Skill and, and, and dive in and perhaps even start teaching on it. Uh, where can our, our listeners uh, connect with you um, and where can they find Minute Skill if they'd like to get in touch for more information about it? Yeah, um, so you could uh, definitely reach out to me over LinkedIn at Nathan Knight. Um, I love talking about this, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, to get on the app, you can just download it. It's in the app and Google Play Store. Just search Minute Skill. I think we're the only app named Minute Skill, um, <laughs> so uh, it should be easy to find. Other than that, MinuteSkill.com, you can uh, see all more all the information there and download the app from there as well. Excellent. So good luck with the uh, growing the app. 
Um, uh, course Plus will shoot every success with Minute Skill because I think it's very innovative um, and I think it's really refreshing to see a new direction for, for learning uh, online. Um, and everyone listening to this uh, podcast, go check it out um, on the app stores. The links will also be uh, in the show, show notes. So uh, thanks again, Nathan, for uh, coming on and telling us about the app. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. Do you wish you could brighten up your course content with some really good looking graphics, maybe some animations to engage your students? Well, you don't have to break the budget hiring a graphic designer. Look no further than a great resource called Lottie Files. Over at LottieFiles.com, you can access thousands of free animations and unlike stock graphics, you can fully customize these in the Lottie Files site directly with their web-based Lottie editor. You can really dig down into the animation and change each component if you wish, or just use them straight out of the box if it fits. If you want to add these animations into your video editor, you can also export them as MP4 and even GIF files too. Lottie Files makes a great addition to your course pages or your course videos. I really love the site, so check it out for yourself at lottiefiles.com. And don't forget, we have over 100 plus tools listed in our free Course Creators Toolbox over at courseprofs.com. So sign up for that too at our website. Again, it's totally free to access. That's all from Course Profs this time around. I hope you've got a ton of value out of this episode. Keep making progress with your course business and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Course Profs podcast. We share our best stuff by email. Subscribe and stay in the know at courseprofs.com slash podcast.